shipyard of a ship once thought to be unsinkable, with the clock ticking, oxygen running out, and the world... Ah, uh, they said the same thing with the Titanic. Yeah, it's unsinkable. Mm hmm See what happened in that. ...watching. I knew that... Shout out to the lads. Shout, shout, shout out to the lads. Yo, shout out to the members though, man. Make sure y'all get at that membership. Members get early access. Members get all the reaction, commands, demands, all that good stuff first. All right? And they also get that shout out. All right, so make sure y'all get at that membership. Get at that membership, all right? Now, you click the title, you read the page. A while back, some rich fucks, some rich assholes who have nothing else better to do with their money but waste it and pretty much just... I don't know, turn it back on people that could really use the money, like people that are starving. So, um, these rich fucks, they went in this submarine, and um, I'm pretty sure you guys pretty much know what happened after that. They, The goal was to go visit the Titanic. Long story short, they end up dying because the submarine that they were in was trash. It wasn't even, like, government approved and all types of messed up stuff. All right, so shout out to 60 Minutes Australia. They're actually going to do, like, a, I guess a coverage on it. We're going to get more detailed on, on what happened. And apparently there's another billionaire rich asshole who wants to try to go visit the titanic again so um he says that the submarine that the other rich assholes used wasn't good enough and the ones that he's gonna use is gonna be way better all right so um yeah may he rest in peace i mean i mean best of luck to him all right so subscribe for the vibe drop that comment let's go coming up i've broken some rules to make this carbon fiber and titanium there's a rule you don't do that well i did you don't move fast and break things if the thing you're gonna break has got you inside it not what we thought a year on from the titan tragedy we knew right where the sub was james cameron reveals tapping sounds tapping sounds are ridiculous what really happened at the bottom of the ocean the entire world waiting with bated breath we all knew they were dead so the coast guard i am screaming that's a fact yo i knew they was dead the mo yo the moment i think the shade room reported this shit the moment they said that they couldn't find the submarine like within like that first two hours i said oh they dead it's potty done potty is done it's clip wrap this up god live that's next on 60 minutes if there's one small comfort to be taken from the Ocean Gate deep sea submersible disaster, it's that death was instant for the five occupants on board. But a year on from the tragedy, there are still so many unanswered questions, like why the strange looking craft on a mission to the wreck of the Titanic catastrophically imploded. And why, for days on end, was the world led to believe there was hope for a successful rescue mission. The That's lack of credible information about what really happened is now becoming increasingly unfathomable. Oh, she looked good though. Not only for other undersea explorers like Hollywood icon James Cameron, but also for the families of the victims. It's in my home, but it's in a box because I, I don't want to see it every day because it's make me remember this bad moment. It might not look like much, but this shriveled styrofoam cup holds more meaning than most of us can fathom. For Sydney Nagiele, it's a treasured trophy, the only remaining evidence of her father's final adventure to the wreck of the Titanic. It must be so special for you to have that cup yeah it's very special yo i don't understand rich people yo if yo i got billions and billions of dollars the first thing that comes to my mind is not gonna be let me go see the titanic why in the world them folks then did a two-hour movie on the titanic if you want to see the titanic watch that long ass movie like what because it was with my dad to his last moment so yeah, it's, uh, it's very special. An avid deep sea explorer, Paul-Henri Nargiolle, made a habit of taking decorated styrofoam cups on his missions. To see them shrink under the pressure of descent, remarkably, this one somehow survived the catastrophic implosion of the Titan, Ocean Gate's experimental submersible. The all-out search for a missing submersible with five people on board leads to a tragic discovery, and there are no survivors. 
One year on, Sydney is still desperate for answers, but she's never heard from Ocean Gate. They still haven't contacted you to give condolences or, or explain what happened? Nothing from them. No condolences, no we are sorry, nothing. That's extraordinary. That's crazy. Yeah. These guys broke them folks said, oh well. The rules. Mm. It's that simple. They should not have been legally allowed to carry passengers. James Cameron is furious too. His friend, Sydney's dad, Paul Henri, should be alive today. I got him and he got me. We Tonight, the legendary film director and Titanic right expert no is ready to set the record straight on the frenzied search mission. Running all over the surface, the entire world, you know, waiting with bated breath, talking about 96 hours of oxygen. We all knew they were dead. And why, despite five active investigations, the world is still waiting for answers. I think they went by a procedure that was torturous for the family. Yo, I don't even, yo, I've never been on a cruise before. And main reason is because I told you guys, pirates are real. Look it up. This is a fact. Pirates are real. There are people that hold, they hold you hostage and all types of, they, they rob you, they take your goods, all types of stuff. They kidnap you. Pirates are real. Okay. And on top of that, I can't swim. I know, I know, I know. I can't swim. And it's not because, oh, black people can't swim, so you're black. No, there's a lot of black people that can swim and really well. The problem is, I grew up in New York. We don't got much beaches out here, you know what I mean? So, you know, and, and on top of that, we don't got much nice, clean pools. So, um, me and water don't get along. And I don't like to go where I can't win, if that makes sense. If you don't get it, then you just ain't never going to get it. But I can't win against water. And even if I could swim, you still can't win against water. Like, it's just, it's like fire, you know? It's just... Why would you even do this? This is just dumb. Coming out of the darkness like a ghost ship still gets me every time. James Cameron's knowledge of the deep goes far beyond his Oscar-winning picture. Are you ready to go back to Titanic? He's visited the Titanic wreck site 33 times and designed and piloted a... Wait, time out. So somebody actually visited the Titanic wreck site? So that mean it was possible? Oh, that's crazy. Nah, them billionaires is alive. They ain't slick. They somewhere in Hawaii somewhere. Because what? Submarine to the deepest known point on Earth. I'm at the trench wall. I am working a steep rock cliff. Over. You've spent more time at the Titanic wreck than the actual captain spent on the ship. Yeah, if you do the math, it actually is true. Given his credentials, you'd think he'd be an obvious choice for investigators looking for expert advice on the Titan's ill-fated dive. And yet, Jim is still waiting for a phone call. What are you hearing about where the investigation is up to? I've made myself available. I've volunteered to the investigative committee at the Coast Guard. Nothing. They haven't interviewed you? I think they want to do things their way. And frankly, I think they've kind of got egg on their face uh, and they don't want uh, outside opinions. That's just my interpretation. It's a stunning claim from one of the world's leading experts in deep sea exploration. That was, you know, almost a year ago, so... Uh, That's astonishing to me. Yeah, why listen to a scientist? We've taken a completely new approach to the sub design and it's all run with this game controller and these touch screens. Yo, when I seen that, I said, there's no way in hell. That shit looks like a PlayStation controller, bro. What? So if you want to go forward, you press forward. If you want to go back, you go back, turn left, turn right, go down, go up. Ocean Gate's Maverick CEO, Stockton Rush. Yeah, you know how much times I'm playing my game and I still like the PlayStation 4. Shut up, leave me alone. I can't afford it. Anyway, so I be playing my game. You gotta tap the controller. Like, you know how much times controllers malfunction, bro? These niggas bugging. Push the limits of sense and safety while promising passengers an unforgettable adventure. Ocean Gate Expeditions offers you the once in a lifetime opportunity to be a specially trained crew member safely diving to the Titanic wreckage site. The corporate video might sound enticing, but in reality, the Titan was an untested outlier. The only commercial submersible in the world with a hull made from carbon fiber composite, which industry experts agree 
is incapable of withstanding extreme deep sea pressure. As a result, the sub wasn't classed or certified. You're remembered for the rules you break. And, you know, I've broken some rules to make this. Carbon fiber and titanium, there's a rule you don't do that. Well, I am done. Not he admitted that he broke the rules and then said you're remembered for it. Yeah, you're dead now. We remember you for being a dead guy who broke the rules when they told you not to do it. That's insane. I did. He seemed to take a real problem. Remembered for the rules you break. And, you know, I've broken some rules to make this carbon fiber and titanium there's a rule you don't do that well i did he seemed to take a real pride in in his unconventional approach in breaking the rules exactly and i think this is this is a place where you've got to really know your stuff before you can step outside the box you don't move fast and break things as they say in silicon valley if the thing you're going to break has got you inside it mm -hmm. along with other innocent people who you know who believe your line of bs on June 18 last year, Stockton Rush set off for the most famous shipwreck on Earth with Paul-Henri Nagele as guide. And so you mean to tell me they didn't test this? And three paying passengers, billionaire explorer Hamish Harding, Pakistani businessman Shahzada Dawood, and his teenage son Suleiman. But less than two hours into the dive on that Sunday, Communication stopped and a media storm began. Rescuers are racing to find the missing dive vessel. But the US Coast Guard is not letting up. Well, we received a call in Boston the afternoon of the 18th. They had put a submersible down on the site of the Titanic and they had lost communications uh, earlier that day. Captain Jamie Frederick knew right away the US Coast Guard was facing an unprecedented challenge. And had you ever received a call of that nature before? No, it was certainly anomalous. In fact, I've been in the Coast Guard uh, for uh, just about 30 years, and I've never dealt with a subsurface uh, search. It was challenging. For the families of those on board, it was an unbearable wait, with only one thing keeping them going, hope. With all the boats that came, all the people involved, for looking for them. Man, no funny. Maybe call me heartless, call whatever, but that's my family members. At that point, I know they dead, bro. Come on, bro. Come on, bro. Hope. I really had hope. I really thought they could find them. And find them alive? Yes, of course. I was thinking they would find them alive. And for a couple of days there, a miracle seemed possible. Eerie echoes of banging noises picked up by sonar equipment lit a fuse under the search for the sub. Painting a haunting picture of the five men trapped inside at the bottom of the ocean. It just made such a beautiful media circus, you know, to talk about a race against time, these poor people, tapping sounds. Tapping sounds, ridiculous. James Cameron wasn't surprised at all when US Navy analysis found the banging noises weren't human and were most likely from the ocean or ships in the area. They're hearing a little crescent wrench or something tapping against a, a hull over the sound of 11 ships operating in mm. the immediate vicinity, moving giant pieces of deck equipment around. Not possible. You know, that's like you know, hearing a, a sparrow fart over the cacophony of an airport. So that whole thing was Maybe a fiction. metaphor you'll want to cut out. <laughs> That's a great metaphor, but you're saying, huh? saying that whole <laughs> Huh? Maybe I'm how I break it down, what? whole thing was fiction. <laughs> well, we knew, I mean, my jaw literally dropped open farther and farther each day that they, that they never cautioned everybody. Coming up, the incredible rescue plans. Once we connected to them, they were coming up and why the entire frenzy was pointless. Because, as you'll see, there was one critical piece of information the Coast Guard didn't share. 9.25, confirmed implosion. And I literally wrote that on the pad the moment I heard from my naval source. So the Coast Guard lied. Oh, this is good. I'm about to blaze up again. The saga of the missing Titan submersible 
had all the makings of a Hollywood movie. Billionaire explorers missing on their way to the graveyard of a ship once thought to be unsinkable, with the clock ticking, oxygen running out, and the world... Ah, uh, they said the same thing with the Titanic. It's unsinkable. Mm-hmm. See what happened in that. ...watching. I knew that this was going to be a big story. Ed Cassano was ready to play the hero. His remotely operated deep sea vehicle, the Odysseus 6, was the only submersible that would make it nearly four kilometres down to the Titanic site, and quickly. Did you at that point truly believe this was a rescue mission? Uh, absolutely. Four days after the sub disappeared and spurred on by reports of banging noises, Odysseus 6 descended through the cold, cruel depths of the North Atlantic Ocean with an incredible mission to tow them into safety. The plan that we had once we plugged into the scene was... Was to distract the whole nation so no one can know what's really going on. Because no way in hell, y'all thought, like, what, four days after? What is it? Like, they say when a person go missing, if you don't find them within, like, 48 hours, they're gone. So you mean to tell me these people went missing in the ocean for four days and you thought they were still alive? Okay. We would go to seafloor. We were rigged for heavy lift. We were going to connect onto the Titan submersible. Once we connected to them, they were coming up. It would have been a miraculous survival story. But James Cameron says it was always fiction. Tonight, revealing for the first time the moment he knew the Titan had suffered a catastrophic implosion. I just found this in my, in my file. It says this is on uh, Casa del Mar Stationery. That's the hotel I was in in L.A. at the time that I heard about it. 9.25, that's a.m., 9.25 confirmed implosion. And I literally wrote that on the pad the moment I heard from my naval source, very reliable source, that they had uh, heard an event and triangulated it to the site. That US naval intelligence of an implosion near the Titanic wreck site came just hours after the Titan set off. For James Cameron, it was a deeply personal tragedy. His good friend and fellow Titanic buff P.H. Nagiele was on board. I had a silent moment because I knew P.H. Uh, PH very well. And um, P.H. is how... Damn, why you ain't trying to talk him out of it, James? May he rest in peace, man. We'd say it because he's French, right? Um, it was a somber moment. And then it just transformed into this crazy thing. Everybody running around with their hair on fire when we knew right where the sub was but nobody could admit that they didn't have the means to go down and look. So they were running all over the surface and the, the entire world, you know, waiting with bated breath, talking about 96 hours of oxygen. We all knew they were dead. We'd already hoisted a glass, you know, uh, a toast to our fallen comrades on Monday night. So the Coast Guard lied? I don't think they lied. I think they went by a procedure that was torturous for the family. Unnecessarily. Unnecessarily torturous for the family. I don't think they lied. They just didn't disclose. They were informed by... by Omission is lying. Failing to tell information is lying. The naval intelligence that the, an implosion event was tracked to the coordinate of the Titanic wreck site. Now, could it have been something else? One in a trillion. But the Coast Guard insists that information was inconclusive. As far as Captain Jamie Frederick is concerned, a rescue mission doesn't become a recovery mission until there's tangible evidence. Had you had at that early stage reports of naval intelligence of an implosion at the Titanic wreck site that day? Had you heard those reports? We received the information from the, from the Navy very early on that they had detected an anomaly in the vicinity of the site of the Titanic. But at the time, that information was at a classified level that couldn't be shared publicly. And it also was not definitive. And frankly, you know, in the business of search and rescue, absent definitive information, we have both, we have a moral responsibility um, and a statutory responsibility, frankly, to continue to search. So did you genuinely feel hope 
that this was still potentially a rescue operation. If there's one thing that I've learned in 30 years of doing search and rescue, if you don't have hope and you're conducting a search and rescue case, you're in the wrong business because I have seen some pretty remarkable things happen uh, over my career. Yeah, but not like this though. But this time, it wasn't to be. Ed Cassano will never forget the moment his remotely operated vehicle, the Odysseus 6, spotted debris on the sea floor. It was quiet, I remember, and uh, you know, it, it felt like immediately there was an answer uh, of what we were addressing. Um, I would say in general, the feeling was professional, but profound. It was obvious that what we were dealing with was a recovery, not a rescue. Sidonie Nagiele had been desperately clinging to hope that her father, PH, could be found alive. When you learned there had been a huge implosion, how did that make you reflect on the search? That in fact, you know, they likely had been dead for days. I don't really know what to think about it because in a way, <laughs> this search, sorry. <laughs> no, take your time, take your time. There's a lot to deal with, you know? Yeah, in a way, I had hope for, for, for this more, you know, about him being alive. So in a way, it's more difficult because it's hope for nothing. But in a way, I thought during four days, he was still alive. It's a sad irony for Sydney that her father's obsession with the Titanic's watery graveyard would ultimately claim his life. My dad could spend all day long talking about the Titanic, so he really loved that. He was Mr. Titanic to many people. Yes, Mr. Titanic. PH's 38th dive to the wreckage, alongside Ocean Gate boss Stockton Rush, would be his last. It never made sense to me how someone with so much experience would agree to dive with Ocean Gate knowing the risks. That's a tricky area for me. Yeah. But I have to rem remind myself that PH wasn't an engineer per se. He was an explorer at heart. I also know his heart, which was to go, which was to go, which was to, to dive. Do you expect there'll be charges? Should someone be prosecuted? I think that, that there should be some changes. They didn't have classification. Theoretically, they should not have been legally allowed to carry passengers. This is an experimental slab. This is a dangerous environment. Is this a case of the person who should be prosecuted is in fact already dead? Yo, how you got an experimental sub and you didn't even, like why he didn't try to have it go down there? Control it with the remote to see if it even works, bro. This is reckless. Dead. Yeah, I think, the, I think the tragedy is he took others with him. He should have listened to the warnings, but don't we say that about the captain of Titanic? James Cameron is now channeling his outrage at Ocean Gate and the investigation into a new deep sea mission, vowing to return to the Titanic in honor of his dear friend and to make sure Stockton Rush's failed experiment is relegated to the history books. Exploration will proceed because it must and because it's part of the human spirit, right? And, you know, a knucklehead that made a mistake shouldn't be holding everybody else back, and it won't, right? Uh, we have plans to build a sub that can, can go to 4,000 meters, and we will. Wow. And uh, I may even go back in, uh, to Titanic in, in that sub just to prove the point that if it's done right, it can be done safely. Yo, this is reckless. Hello, I'm... Still wouldn't do it. 